Cassette Master presents a very special measuring device. This is the TIF installation tester model IT990. This is a Japanese made device which is used to measure resistances up to a giga ohm. That's right, an entire giga ohm. The device is made for testing the resistance of insulation, which most of it will just go to infinity. It can also be used to, to check the impedance of multimeters, as long as they're able to handle 400 volts DC. Because this device has a step-up power supply inside. To my delight, it is not encased in epoxy, but is exposed plainly for all to see the oscillator circuitry with the step-up transformer and even some trimmers to adjust <clears throat> to adjust the meter. This device not only produces 400 volts DC for measurements to measure the uh, millions of ohms of resistance but also can be used as an AC voltmeter with its lowest measurement mark and marked to be 50 volts up to 500 volts AC. This device still works and was given to me by one of my co-workers. Here's the operating instructions for this device. Here you see a bigger serial number but here you see a much smaller serial number of only 4077 interesting thing there. One of the battery modules has this piece broken off, but I think when it's put back inside here it will be held in place. Just replace the battery? No, I'm making a video of this device for YouTube. Uh, so now I can show the machine in operation. Measuring skin resistance. It is time for work, so I gotta stop the video. Okay, well, now I'm back at home from work, and I could do a better um, presentation of this meter in action. So, here's a little bit better look at this meter the TIF installation tester IT99. 990. There is the test button. Mega ohms. 500 volts per 1000 mega ohm. And this device is able to read up to 1000 mega ohms, or better yet, a giga ohm. And of course, up to 500 volts AC. Here's the back of the meter. There's a connection for earth and line, battery check, something called guard, and a DCN for external power supply. So we're going to hook up our leads. There we go. There's some special high value resistors we're going to be checking. Of course, you have standard values like 1 mega ohm, which is pretty common, whose color code is the humble brown, black, green. So we have to hold down this button to energize the high voltage power supply. Touch the other lead and We read almost right or really close to one meg. Now let's com uh, compare it with a digital meter.
digital meter reads 1 meg or 1.0045 meg. So it wasn't exactly 1 meg, but we'll see some more interesting readings soon. This digital meter is pretty nice. This is the Fluke 8062A. But here I have a resistor, and if I go in to read it, it still says overload. And I have it set to the highest one it can go in the mega ohm range, and I got overload. I said, what? It's an open circuit? Is the resistor bad? Think again. So let's get the same resistor. Hook it up to our high resistance mega ohm meter. Put the probe to the other lead. We have to push down the test button. 500 meg. Now here's the reason why we weren't reading exactly one meg. I have this meter at an angle and when it's at an angle this does not exactly go to the infinity. I have to make it straight down. You can see it goes better to the infinity. When I do a test now it goes almost right smack dab to the 500. This, thank you very much, is a 500 mega ohm resistor. That's right, 500 meg. That's half a giga ohm. That's a lot of resistance. Now, let's say we want to read a giga ohm. Here I've got two 500 mega ohm resistors in series. And now I'm going to put the probe to the other resistor. We are reading, literally, no joke, a gigaohm of resistance. That's right. We are reading a gigaohm. This is the first time in my life I've ever had the privilege of literally getting out a meter and measuring a gigaohm of resistance. Out of curious, oh, curiosity, I wonder if this could light up a neon light through the gigaohms of resistance. Here we have a standard NE2 neon glow lamp. Okay, let's try this out. It does light the neon. Excuse me for a second. Um, I'm having a hard time getting on the screen at the same time. Let's turn off these lights too so we can get it a little bit darker on the subject here. Okay, so we have that light off and we will uh, attempt to do this again with the neon on the screen. You can see the neon has lit up. You can see also it shows its DC voltage because only one pole of the neon is lit. Now you couldn't see the meter swing so let's turn this light back on and let's uh, measure that again. Please do not fall, stupid phone camera. Ugh. Okay, let's try that. So we should be able to see it read a gig ohm, a giga ohm. You can see the meter go to a thousand, a thousand meg. You can perhaps barely see the neon light come on but it's very very dim because the current flow through that thing is extremely low but that is just incredible and again with the light off so that's pretty remarkable to say the least now that we have this meter sitting level let's try reading the one meg again to make sure it goes right to the one meg on the meter. You can see it's still not perfectly at the one, but it's still pretty close. But still, 
That has been a presentation of a very special meter. It's able to measure extremely high resistances. This meter also has a case for it. And anyway, it's a pretty interesting device. Made in Japan. Hope you enjoyed this video showing the TIF insulation tester model IT990, also known as a mega ohm resistance meter for up to a giga ohm range. Okay, I continue after giving my ending of the videos, quote, quote. I continue with showing another thing that can be done with this insulation tester, aka high mega ohm multimeter, and that is, I know this does not measure AC resistance, so it cannot be true impedance in the way of AC resistance, but I can use it to test the resistance, DC resistance, of another meter. So, VTVMs are known for being high impedance, that is, vacuum tube voltmeters. So, we're going to be turning this meter on and um, to DC volts, and of course, it's going to have to warm up the vacuum tubes. Now, I don't have the original probe for this old RCA senior volt ohmish meter, so I'll have to kind of touch the wires of the, or the probes of uh, the uh, TIF uh, ohm, uh, mega ohm meter to the uh, input of the uh, VTVM. Another interesting tidbit of information is that um, this, whenever you're turning on this meter here, this supplies positive power, this supplies negative power. But I'm going to touch it as if this were negative and this were positive, and I have this set to minus DC volts, so it expects negative polarity. Now I'm going to zero the meter. And it will measure the voltage being put out by this mega ohm meter, as well as the mega ohm meter will read the DC resistance, which will probably be close to, if not equivalent to, the impedance of this VTVM. Of course doing this all in one hand and things like that is always uh, proves to be a uh, unnecessarily uh, large challenge um, Especially uh, considering the camera has to also get everything. So, how about doing it this way? So, this is set to a range of 500 volts full scale. So, the VTVM is reading uh, 430 volts. While the meter here, the mega ohm meter, is reading, gee, bumming, 15 meg, about 15 mega ohms. Yeah, about 15 mega ohms. So it's interesting to know that, to notice that. Now. When we compare it to a, a digital meter, you'll see that it reads a little bit lower than on the uh, VTVM. Whereas the VTVM read about 430 volts, the uh, DVM is reading uh, 400 volts or 399 volts. Also notice the impedance is about the same. Uh, 15 mega ohms. 
Now let me check this again with it in this position. It's closer to 10 meg. So actually the 15 meg is a little deceptive because this meter needs to sit in this position. You can see now it reads 10 mega ohms. So anyway, so it would have been around 10 mega ohms for the other meter too. The voltage difference, I'm not sure if it had to do with the accuracy of this VTVM not being calibrated or if it had to do with um, maybe the impedance was slightly different but not very much or anyway I'm not sure. So this meter, the reason why I wasn't reading right vertically is simply or is simply because I haven't zeroed it in the vertical position so I'm just going to get a little screwdriver and adjust that. See now whenever we do the meter now it should go to 10 meg and it does it's still across the digital meter. Now I'm not perfect. The bad news you can see here is that this old Hewlett Packard VTVM wanders. It has not been restored, so Although I have sprayed the switches and um, checked the capacitors, it has not been restored, so it has an issue, or apparently it has noise. But it still can serve as a candidate to show just how high the resistance of this meter is. The other one, the other VTVM was 10 meg, showed as around 15, but it was more like 10 meg, just like the DMM was. No big difference. No big advantage to impedance. But this one does have an advantage when it comes to resistance. This one only measures in the DC range, so I might as well consider it the impedance of this meter. If I measure it, the needle goes to close to 0.6, which would represent 600 volts. Obviously, the load is a lot less, so the voltage from the mega ohm meter is not brought down as much. But, as can be read on here, the resistance of this VTVM is a whopping 200 mega ohms. That is pretty amazing. I hope you enjoyed this video. I uh, shot, well, across more than one day. But this sh showing shot on the 6th of April 2017 with the other showings earlier this week. This entire video has been a smoke detector production. I hope you have enjoyed it. Goodbye.